Hello everyone, Arxie here. Today I'm going to bring you a little how-to video on mining with Terrafarm. I thought it was prudent to take a look at this with the impending release of Elk Mountain, which we took a little uh, preview tour of the other day, and uh, certainly the feedback on it was overwhelmingly positive. A lot of people looking forward to playing on it. So I thought, let's take a look at how to do the mining with Terrafarm. It's a little bit different to how mining has been integrated into farming simulator games previously. For the best. Now, what do you need? Well, firstly, you need Terrafarm, and that is about it. Having a map that has been set up for Terrafarm um, is a positive. So, Elk Mountain, as we had a look at, does have all the different additional field types that Terrafarm requires for the gold mining, uh, for gravel extraction, those kind of things. But other than that, we can do it with just the basic mods, and that's what you see here in front of us. We've got the uh, 7R over there with the loader on the front class wheel loader here as well with a bucket now if you want to push yourself a little bit further of course fs minor and uh, others have got some fantastic mods out there which are also terra farm ready uh, but all the ga base game buckets and things like that are terra farm enabled terra farm ready so you don't actually need to go for the big big toys but uh, they certainly are a lot of fun to play with so we'll take a look at those and that is about it so we're going to start out here at the gravel mine and then we'll go over and take a look at the gold mine. Uh, it's very simple here. The gravel pit is set up and it has a rock crusher. Now this rock crusher is set up just to sell. And if we have a look in the menu and down here under stones, you can see we've got the debris crusher, $151. Uh, the other place you can sell is the train. So you can ship things to the train. Now, these other two here, the Lime Production and Lime Factory, these are two placeable mods, which we'll go and have a look at in a minute. These are out of the uh, in-game mod hub, so they are re readily accessible, and you know they've been tested by giants, so trustworthy mods to use. Uh, but let's jump into the 7R, and we'll just go through some of the initial settings on Terrafarm. Now, before I do that, if you haven't used Terrafarm before, can I suggest you go and check out the Farm Sim guys videos on Terrafarm. He's done some fantastic videos on how to use it, the basics of Terrafarm, what it does, what it provides. So I'll link those up in the corner as well. But uh, let's just jump in there and we'll take a look at some of the functions that you need to set up. So for demonstration purposes, I've left the debug mode on so you can see the little circles there on the front of the bucket. It's a sure sign that the piece of equipment you're using is Terrafarm ready. Now it is only the bucket. This bucket could go on any front loader and it would work. The uh, attachment the tractor the wheel loader doesn't have to be terrafarm ready and we'll look at that in a minute up in the gold mine but uh you'll see the other telltale sign is in the top right corner you can see that the albut universal bucket is the terraform user interface up there in the, the top right hand corner now the other thing i've got is the help menu up here so you can see we've got our keypad controls down there for terraform so we've got o we press the o button you can see our Symbols around our bucket change to blue and red, and our Terrafarm user interface up in the top goes white. So just tab back and forth between that, you can see active, deactivated. So that's to turn it on and off. The other key one here is the Terrafarm menu, which is I. So that brings up the options there for Terrafarm. We can turn off the debug mode, so if you wanted to play without the little dots on it, you could do that. Uh, and obviously to enable Terrafarm, which is kind of critical. And we're going to have a look at the other settings in just a minute. And then in here we've got two other options. We've got the toggle discharge mode, which is B. And that will change what happens when you tip the product out of or material out of your bucket. So you see there we've got raise, flatten, smooth, paint or material. Now we want to keep the material option there. And the other button is Y, which toggles the terraform mode. So you can see there... We've got options flatten, smooth, material, or lower. Now, it doesn't really matter for this which one you use, just don't use material. Uh, obviously, they're pretty self explanatory. You use lower, it's going to lower the terrain. If you use flatten, it will flatten the terrain, and smooth will smooth the terrain. So, it all comes down to what you want to achieve. Bearing in mind, we are trying to represent that you're digging into piles of gravel here at the mine. So, we're going to leave it there on smooth. We've got our discharge to material, which is the critical thing there see we went through those but we want to be able to pick up the product using the smooth function and that will fill the bucket up with the material if we had it on one of the other options of course it would level or raise the ground around it so those are the basics there is one other setting that we'll just take a look at in the menu 
So one of the key things with TerraFarm, we click on this icon here, this gives us the settings just for this bucket. So each bucket can be configured separately and that's quite important for working here in the different mines, the different areas. So we're using gravel, what we want to have down here is our materials. Now this materials section here, this defines what will be picked up and tipped out of your bucket. So we want to have stones because we're working in the gravel pit. Uh, there's other options, coal, tailings, concrete, dirt, gravel, sand, iron, pay dirt, crude oil, and then snow, road salt, manure, lime, back to stones. So any of those could be created as we uh, want to tip material out. So we're going to leave it there on stones. None of these other ones here are too much of a uh, critical setting at the moment. You could change some of these and play around with these. Again, suggest going and checking out some of the uh, preview videos of Terrafarm when it was first released and just having a bit of a play around with those and what they change. But for uh, our purpose, we are just looking at what material we are going to be tipping out there. Alright, so with those settings all turned on, or set up, we're going to turn the bucket on. Pull up here next to what is our pile. Let that lower down, and you'll see as we get towards the ground, it will go green. And you can see we are having a lowering effect or smoothing effect on that part of the ground. I haven't quite got a full bucket. We'll have another go. There we go. There's 1,000 litres put into our bucket. Now, like I said, we can go and dump this into the debris crusher. Like I said as well, we are set up to just sell. Uh, but the critical thing, and this is where I said it before, is the discharge is set to materials. If this wasn't set to material, when you dump this in here, it would, uh, wouldn't do anything. You wouldn't get it falling out like that. It would try and actually level the terrain or whatever setting you had it in. There you go. We can't quite see it. But there's about $300, I think, we earned off that. So that's, uh, that's pretty much setting up the uh, gravel pit. It's very, very simple. Now, I'm just going to grab one of the other pieces of equipment and go and show you a couple of other little things just to show you how you can expand your gameplay here with Terrafarm. So we've got the class wheel loader here with the uh, bigger bucket on. We need to turn that on to enable Terrafarm. It was with O again and you can see there we're driving forward and slowly. Now because I've got that on smooth it's smoothing. You can see there it didn't have a very strong effect so we want to change that to Probably flatten, I think flatten is the best. Uh, but again, just play around with which one works best for you. But there we go, see how much quicker we got those 3,500 litres of stones in there. But I've got a few things set up on the other side of the road here, which we'll go and take a quick look at and uh, show you how each of these work. There's two mods we have here, one is the lime factory, the other is the lime production. And I'll just show you those in the build menu and you'll be able to find these on ModHub. So under productions, we'll go right to the end here. This is the lime factory, which is the one in front of us. And then the lime production. Now the lime production might be familiar if you've watched our No Man's Land series with the farm some guy. Well, that is the one we have used there. But quite simply, again, come in here. We've got a tip point. We can discharge our material. Keep a little bit in here so we can go and show you the other one. And that will convert it to lime. You can see we've got a uh, outflow pipe there where you can dump your lime out. And then likewise is this crusher, which will also do exactly the same. Convert the, uh, it's the high tip on this one. Convert the stones into lime as well. Now this one requires water. Uh, I've used the by production point or production materials option to get that set up. But if we just run over here and take a quick look. So you can see there we've put our stones in, we've got our water, and that will over time. And there we go, it's just started producing some lime. And we can actually look here at the lime factory. It's doing exactly the same. We activate it and running it's got the stones in there and that will just produce the lime as well so a couple of different options there and of course to expand on that we've got some sell points for lime either at the lime production where we are you can sell it directly or again take it to the train and make a little bit of money off that now the other piece of equipment we have here is the t-rex uh, debris crusher now this is another fs minor mod and this would just expand again further if you wanted to try something even more with the gravel mine, let's take it from mining gravel. We just come up in here and tip our stones into this end of the uh, debris crusher, and you'll see it starts dropping gravel out the other end. So it's taken the stones and crushed them from stones into gravel. Now, the reason I've got two of them set up here, if we go and pick up this gravel. There we go, we've got our gravel in our bucket. Should have probably turned Terra Farm off there, or we would have actually potentially changed the level of the ground. 
we tip this up into this one, you can see it's already changed texture, but that has given us sand. So you could actually set yourself up with a full mining operation here, going through the whole process of taking the gravel, crushing it down, or taking the stone, sorry, out of the quarry, crushing it down into gravel, and then converting it into sand. And again, we just have a look at the economies on the map. You can see here, we do have gravel and sand as options. So our stones, let's use the train for example, $148. We crushed it down to gravel, we've tripled our value, 462. And again, if we go to sand, it's even higher again. So you could really set yourself up here as a miner, doing uh, some work here in the gravel, selling off some stones, gravel and sand to make a little bit of money. So plenty of options here for using the gravel mine. And just uh, amazing to see how Terra Farm could be used in this way to expand on the mining. It's fantastic. So we're going to leave things there, I haven't actually used the Volvo, but uh, we're going to actually use one of these over in the gold mine. So we'll wrap things there with the gravel, that is a pretty quick look at the basics of Terra Farm, using it for mining the gravel, and just some of the expansions that you could add in to bring more gameplay options to you. So how exactly do we take this pile of dirt, it's not even a pile of dirt, this terrain, dig it up, convert it from dirt into gold? Well, let's go through and take a very quick look at that. So you can see here I've got a few different options for equipment set up. I've got the big Volvo there and we'll get some dirt here out of the mine. We'll run it up to the wash plant up the top and then go through the quick stages of how to get it converted from one product into refined gold that you can go and sell down in town. So the easiest way here to look at it is probably looking at the production chains. 10,000 litres of dirt along with some diesel will give us some tailings, which is a byproduct, and our concentrate, which has our gold in it. You can start to see the gold flecks coming through there. So that is our first part. So we're going to dig up the dirt out of the mine and run that up to the wash plant. Second part is the gold wash room. This is where your concentrate, along with some diesel, gets converted into gold. Gold flakes. No finds or no uh, debris or anything like that in it, it's been washed clean and we just have our raw gold. From there we take that over to the gold smelter where your gold gets put in and comes out as smelted gold bars which you can take down to sell. So on their own all the parts of the production for gold have their own value. Click on dirt there, you can see the train is $150 per thousand litres. Come down here to concentrate $600. Onto the gold, four and a half thousand dollars, and of course the gold bars on the top of the pile there, it's the thirty-six thousand dollars. Now throughout the production, things get watered down, so you need a lot of dirt to make your concentrate. You need a lot of concentrate to make a little bit of gold. The gold to gold bars isn't quite as big a loss, but there is a little bit of loss through there. Now I have done a calculation on that, but I'm going to wait until the very end to share that with you. But uh, it's probably not what you're going to do it for. You'd be doing it for the experience of taking something as a raw material and converting it into gold, get that real gold fever. So we're going to start over here with the Volvo, jump into that and just take a quick look again at the settings we need to do. We've got our settings here on Terra Farm where you do have the lower option along with discharge. Now the one we need to check in here is our materials. We don't want stones, we needed dirt. So we'll set that there. Now if you really wanted to cheat you could go straight to pay dirt and dig pay dirt and run that straight up into the concentrate plant. Obviously not the intention, uh, so you're welcome to play it however you like, but we're going to start off here with some dirt, get that loaded up into the uh, into the truck and get it up into the wash plant. The beauty of this loader, 18,000 litre capacity. So I think this big Volvo dumper has a 72,000 litre uh, dump bed on the back, so four loads from this bucket, fills it up pretty well. We'll just get this done very quickly, uh, I'll take a quick look, we won't worry about using the excavators for loading or anything like that, but I'll just show you exactly the same deal what of some of the FS Miner mods can be used for mining. Now these are all FS Miner's mods which have been enabled for Terrafarm, so uh, certainly we'll put a link to his content down in the description if you want to go and find out where to download some of these from, uh, that will be the best place. You just start to see there, as I just drive forward, 
Because I've got it on lower, we've actually started digging down. That's why I like to use flatten. Flatten takes a little bit longer to fill. And if you're working up on top of that, let's say you're taking one of the excavators right up on top, uh, that might not be a bad option. But just for what we're doing there, if you are lowering that too much, it's going to become a little bit tricky. But there we go, we've got a full load there, I think. We'll top in the truck, take a quick look. Indeed, 72,000 litres. So we'll get that up into the wash plant. But before we do, we'll just take a look at a couple of these excavators while we're down here. So we've got the lever 980 here and try and get some pay dirt here into the uh, bucket. Now I'm running dual joysticks which does make this a whole lot easier. Here we go, we can get that turned around and could start forming a little bit of a pile. So you could even, if you wanted to, get up on top of the pay dirt up there and uh, start dumping it down to lower and then maybe use the wheel loader to load up off the ground. Now you wouldn't need to use Terra Farm if that was the case because you'd be picking up the uh, product straight off the ground. There we go see how that one's working and all three are exactly the same the main difference is the bucket capacity so we've got a 13,000 litre bucket here on this one a little bit smaller than the wheel loader but uh, quite a quick and efficient way to get a few piles of uh, dirt out of the ground and all three of these are exactly the same function they do exactly the same thing and you would have seen across everything all of these work exactly the same way Terrafarm once you get your head around it is very simple to understand the main thing I would say Understand that the terraform part in the heads up display is what you do to the ground and the discharge mode is what happens when you tip the bucket. And just taking a quick look in the shop, so there's the lever, it has the bucket attached, 13,000 litres. The Volvo has a 10,000 litre bucket and the Cabalco has a 6,000 litre bucket. So some different options there for what you want to load. And just finally before we head up to the wash plant, we've got the Komatsu wheel loader, another FS Minor product. But we've put the Volvo bucket on it and this was just to demonstrate you can see up there we do have the Terrafarm heads up display on the front you can see the little circles there on the front of the bucket so we can do everything we want to because it's the bucket that has the Terrafarm enabled on it not the wheel loader in this case it's a little bit of a uh, glitch there visually it's not designed for this wheel loader so there is a little bit of the hitch that shows through but uh, it doesn't affect performance but it is just there to demonstrate to you Terrafarm doesn't care about the piece of equipment it cares about the bucket or blade or whatever it might be that you're using to interact with the ground. We're on the long haul up here out of the pit it's a bit of a drive a bit steep for the truck but it's getting there. Now one thing as we're doing this I'll tell you what it is a lot of fun to set up a proper auto drive course and have these trucks running automatically uh, while you're down there loading you could have two or three of them up here uh, there's just probably enough width to be able to get them to pass it's a bit tight here in a couple of spots but uh, it is very rewarding when you have that set up and you get this great cycle of trucks going around and around and you're just loading and know that they're going up and dumping very rewarding so if that's something you're interested in it certainly suggests giving it a go so up here at the wash plant we'll just get backed in get a tip trigger there and we can tip our dirt into the wash plant and we will need to turn this on it does require diesel so we've got the uh, diesel tanker down there on the back of the elk mountain truck and there we go we've got our dirt is into our wash plant so let's go and take a quick look at this so we're getting some diesel put into the wash plant which is the last little piece of the puzzle we'll just leave that filling we go over in here and take a quick look at the production point you can see there we've got our 72,000 litres of dirt, it's already processed some of it and you already see we're starting to get some concentrate and tailings coming out of it so there you go, that's all it's needed to do now I'm going to just cheat in some uh, extra pay dirt here just using the bio production inputs mod that came out on ModHub recently just so we can get the production to carry on going and to get some concentrate out of it that we can then show you up in the washroom and then the smelter how those pieces all go together We've just bumped time up there to 10 times just to get things a little bit quicker. I'm just going to jump here into the Volvo. Now, we can start to get let tailings here out of this uh, conveyor. This is the washed stones that had no gold in them or have had all the dirt washed off and the gold has gone down into the uh, into the trommel there and would be now in the sluices and getting caught in the sluice runs and picked up, taken up to the wash plant. What's the purpose of tailings? Well they are sellable. There you go, you can take them down to the train at $300 per thousand litres. There we go, there is our first box of uh, pay dirt or concentrate. So you can see the gold there, look at that, nice and shiny. Let's uh, go and grab the tally handler and we'll put it over on the trailer and 
run it up to the washroom. Before anyone asks, the Bobcat is by FS Miner as well. Uh, most of the mods here are FS Miners. The truck is by Elk Mountain Modding. And uh, the trailer on the back is the Gooseneck trailer by Northwest Mods and Edits. Uh, same one we had on Deer Creek as the nurse trailer for the uh, sprayer. But there we go, we'll get this run up to the washroom. So when you buy the mine, you end up with these buildings up the top. The one here on the left is the washroom. The one over in the far distance on the right is the smelter. So you can come in here to the interact point. Bring that up and you can see, again, we need some diesel. Now I'm just going to cheat some in here so we've got that running. And again, we need the concentrates. We're going to grab that off the back of the trailer and it gets put down over here. The concentrate off the back of the trailer, be able to put it down in the trigger here. All right, there we need to go. It needed a little bit of persuasion. Uh, it may have to be tipped. I wasn't quite sure exactly what was going on there, but we have managed to get it into the washroom. And you can see it there. We've already gone through half of it, actually. Of course, we're on fast time. So again, I'm just going to buy a little bit more here so we can get the uh, production going. And so after a little bit of time, I'm just watching it count down in the bottom, we should get a pallet of gold pop up here in front of us in just a second. There it is populates and uh, we've got gold concentrate 100% Yukon gold not quite in Wyoming but uh, there we go we've got some gold we can take that over to the smelter we've just driven in now that's taken it much better than the uh, last one we just take a look in here no need for diesel we're already getting some gold bars being produced it looks like them there is it we interact with that no we can't we'll just wait and see whether there's ones we can pick up or how we get our gold out in just a minute and there we go the pallet has spawned over there behind us so we'll go and get, have a look at this get it picked up and well we might as well take it down to the pawn shop and sell it i suppose down here in clear water i'm just going to head in here on our left is the pawn shop and see the uh cell point trigger just there oh, i think it's fantastic that that is the gold cell point could not have think of a more appropriate place to sell gold than at a pawn shop We'll just get banked in here, hopefully as we drive through it. We'll just sell. Looks like our money's going up. And the gold's disappearing. There we go, all gone. $36,000 for that uh, 1,000 litres of gold. So that's, uh, that's very cool. Now I have had a look, as I said earlier, I have had a look at the economy of it all. And how much of each product you need to put in to end up with a thousand litres of gold. Now the big number, dirt, to start off with, you need 420,000 litres of dirt into the wash plant to be able to get enough concentrate to turn into gold to make a thousand litres of gold bar. Now if you do the maths on that, you'd actually get more money selling the dirt at the train station. But to be honest, do you want to haul it down there all the way down to the train station? And back up that's a fair few trips at least this way you're only taking it as far as the wash plant the concentrate and the gold on their own plus the tailings uh, don't equal the amount of gold so it really is that difference between the value of the dirt in game at the moment and the gold bars now i have suggested back to elk mountain modding uh maybe have a consideration on that economy uh there is pay dirt in there which they don't make use of but it has about half the value of dirt compared to uh the price at the train station so if it was changed to pay dirt into the gold mine or into the gold wash plant it might make it a little bit closer but that is the figures that is the numbers at the moment so i'll leave it up to you to decide how you want to uh, approach that so that's been my how-to video for mining with terra farm particularly focusing on the gravel and gold mines here on elk mountain i uh, hope that has been of some help to you one thing I was thinking about as we were driving down is you don't actually need to use the mines, the designated mines at least, for your mining. You could strip some gravel off some ground somewhere on the side of a hill, strike pay dirt. You could dig in the side of the hill and get some gold out of there. Who knows, it's up to you. That is the beauty of having Terra Farm. You could set this up however you liked. Uh, beauty of Farm Sim is how flexible it's becoming with things like that. So lots and lots of different options. But as always, I hope that video has been helpful to you. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.